so hello friends so today i'll be talking on uh, this uh, tutorial training tutorial on optic now sheet diameter so it's a very easy sort of a procedure that one could do to assess the intracranial pressure so i wish to acknowledge my colleague uh, dr marutesh who helped me to develop this content so it's fairly simple test to perform on the bedside uh, so every trainee is expected to know about uh, this uh, a very easy way to assess the intracranial pressure so to first of all to uh, try to understand the optic nerve anatomy so, uh, as we understand most of us would have forgotten uh, the sort of basic anatomy so if you look at the optic nerve so you have this uh, choroid around it and then you have a sclera so the key thing that we need to remember is optic nerve is in close proximity with the dura and the subarachnoid space so you have this dura and subarachnoid space which it is in close proximity and at the proximal part of the optic nerve as it originates from the optic disc is a place where it is in a extremely close proximity with this subarachnoid space here and the dura so any changes in the intracranial pressure is reflected with the swelling of the optic nerve which is in a very close proximity in the proximal part so that remains the crux of this whole optic nerve sheet diameter and this is the optic nerve and this optic nerve tends to inflate or tends to become bigger or tends to swell up with increase in the intracranial pressure and that is what we ascertain in optic nerve sheet diameter so when you look when you put an ultrasound probe uh, the vascular probe and look into the cross section of the eye so this is how it looks so you have uh, the cornea in the anterior most aspect and then you have the anterior chamber and then you have the lens then you have the retina and then the vitreous humor in the in between so basically when the patient is lying flat in icu many a times it may be very hard to appreciate uh, very distinctly the anterior chamber and lens which is not of much relevance to us but you would see a black sort of a posterior chamber and the retina and the optic nerve that emanates from there so so the vascular probe the probe that you would use for uh, assessing the optic nerve sheet diameter is the vascular probe 7.5 megahertz uh, so uh, it is advised that uh, when the patient is possibly not conscious so we would be doing this test possibly in icu in an unconscious patient who is intubated ventilated to assess the icp so it is so desirable to put a tegaderm on the eye so that the gel you put doesn't enter the cornea and causes irritation uh, so this is something that you could adopt uh, but i hear from the ophthalmologist my wife is an ophthalmologist she says we don't need to do this and the gel is fairly okay but i think this could be utilized so when you put the probe so this is the probe again and uh, you would see the anterior chamber here you would see the lens here the posterior chamber the retina would be here and the key aspect that you are interested is in the optic nerve and there is the optic nerve sheet around it so the technique is to place the vascular probe uh, on the upper eyelid um, in a transverse position and you would visualize the optic nerve something like this in icu so not necessarily it may be expected of you to appreciate the cornea anterior chamber but you will see sort of an iris and an and and the lens and then you would see the huge posterior chamber and this this black thing that emanates from the optic disc is the optic nerve uh, so if you have to look sonologically on the different parts uh, as i already shown so you would see the anterior chamber here you would see the lens this is the vitreous humor and this black thing that emanates from the optic disc is the optic nerve um, so this is where the measurements are done and the retina is uh, just adjacent to it Uh, so when the, so how do we go about measuring so the key aspect for all the trainees to remember is two numbers we have to remember 3 mm and 5 mm it's a very very simple test so when you put a ultrasound probe you would see a vitreous humor like that so you you put the calipers uh, and you take 3 mm from the optic disc uh, until 3 mm and then you measure the transverse sort of diameter after the 3 mm that you have taken so basically you are measuring the transverse diameter 3 mm distal to the optic disc and that is what uh, will give you the reflection of the icp on the optic nerve so in adults so this is something uh, that needs to be borne in mind so it is uh, suggested that average of 2 to 3 measurements are to be taken to decide if the icp is really elevated if you have 
uh, the diameter more than 5 mm. In adults, the optic nerve sheet diameter should be less than 5 mm. In children more than one year, it should be less than 4.5 mm. In children less than one year, it should be less than 4 mm. So in adults, so these are the studies that have validated this test. So one study has come from Germany and one meta-analysis from the Canadian group in 2019. So in adults, if the optic nerve diameter is more than 5 millimeter, it's 100% sensitive to raised intracranial pressure. If it is more than 5.7 millimeter, it's 100% specific for raised intracranial pressure. And, and, and this uh, optic nerve sheet diameter, it only enlarges close to around 7 to 7.5 millimeter after which it plateaus. Irrespective of how much ICP increases, it fails to further increase. So more than 5 millimeter and 5.7 millimeter, 5 to 5.5 and more than 5.5 is definitive of raised ICP and more than 5 millimeter, one should consider that ICPs are high. So very, very simple test. As soon as you keep the vascular probe in the transverse position, you will very clearly see this. I'll show you the video that we did in ICU. It's very easy. Any patient you take, you would visualize this and you can do this test pretty easily. And again, another image to show. So you take three millimeter from the optic disc down and you stop at three millimeter and then you take a transverse diameter uh, uh, from end to end. And if it is more than five millimeter, it suggests that ICP is high, 100% sensitivity. If it's more than 5.7, 100% specific that ICPs are high. So I'll just show you the video that we have taken in our ICU. So as you see, we have put a tegaderm. Uh, so we have masked the patient. So you keep the probe in a transverse position on the upper eyelid. So this is a traumatic brain injury currently in our ICU, but ICPs are not high. He preclostum is done and patient is stable. So as you see, very clearly you'll see this vitreous humor and we have put from the origin of the optic disc, we are taking uh, three millimeter. You can see here 2.82. I think we stop at around 2.97. So this was done in the middle of night. And then you stop at 2.96 and then you take a transverse diameter here. So very simple test you can do in any patient where there may be a suspicion of raised ICP and you can ascertain whether ICPs are going up and whether you have to inform your surgeons or any other intervention needs to be done. So you'll see a transverse diameter is being uh, taken with the help of calipers from, um, uh, from one end to another end of the optic now. And as you see, you stop at exactly that and the uh, measurement as you see is, uh, you know, four, 4.3 millimeter here. You can see here. So it should it is so it is less than five millimeter. This is a patient with traumatic brain injury with an extra dural hemorrhage on tracheostomy with a borderline GCS. But it is day four or day five of TB. And you see the optic nerve sheet diameter is 0.46. So it is not so there is no high ICP. So very simple test, friends. And every trainee uh, can do this on the bedside. Uh, so there are other things that you can make out when you are doing. So it is not only optic nerve sheet diameter. I agree that we are not ophthalmologists. We don't expect you to know everything. But if you see something like this, when you put an ultrasound probe, it's a ruptured globe. And as you see, the lens is displaced and there is a reduced in the size because you see a nice big globular structure here. You don't see this. The whole eye is sort of collapsed. There is reduced size of globe. Anterior chamber is collapsed and there's buckling of sclera. So if you see this, then you know there is a ruptured globe. And if you see something like this, it is very evident. You see this is a lens which is sort of dislocated for whatever reason, uh, which is displaced from the normal position. And they could possibly have vitreous hemorrhage because the lens is displaced into the posterior chamber. And if you see something like this in a trauma patient, you know, an opaque sort of a uh, lucent sort of a structure. So then possibly there is a foreign body in this. So it just suggests intraocular foreign body. Any white sort of a, a elements that you see within the vitreous. So you can possibly make a assessment that there could be foreign body and possibly you have to reach out to ophthalmologist. So, so it's not like we would expect intensivists to identify retinal detachment, but it looks very evident uh, when it is done. So you would see the retina which is uh, detached and you will see a flap within the vitreous tumor. And uh, retrobulbar hemorrhage is something possibly we tend to see in trauma patients. So there is a classic sign called guitar pick sign. So, so this is the guitar pick sign that you would see. So you see here, this is the pick sign, uh, which is suggestive of retrobulbar hemorrhage. And you can see here, so there is a guitar pick sign here, a huge sort of a hematoma in the shape of a guitar pick, which suggests it's a retrobulbar hematoma. 
So the other differential diagnosis of uh, optic nerve sheath diameter, which is increased. So obviously in trauma, in the with, with the increased ICP, you would see optic nerve sheath diameter more than five millimeter. But there are other conditions where ONST can be more than five millimeter, so it can increase or it can swell up when there is inflammation of the optic nerve in the optic neuritis, or if there is a arachnoid cyst of the optic nerve, or if there is trauma to the optic nerve, or if there is meningioma, or any mass lesion within the orbit, anterior orbit mass or cavernous sinus mass, all this can sort of increase the pressure and increase the optic nerve sheet diameter. And these are some of the differentials one could remember. So that's all folks in optic nerve. So it's a very simple test. So you just have to remember two numbers, three and five, three vertical diameter from the optic nerve sheet transverse diameter of more than five millimeter in the optic nerve can tell you that it is possibly high ICPM. If it is more than 5.7, 100% specific, more than 500% sensitive, and, at, and it plateaus at 7.5 millimeter. If you can remember this, that's good enough. In addition to that, you can see some foreign body, you can see the ruptured globe, or you can see the displaced lens, or you can see the retinal detachment. If you can see, that's a bonus. And these are the differentials. So thank you one and all. So you can visit my website, www.drpradipragapa.com to hear more lectures. And you can go to these exam lectures and all these videos are categorized into various sections, uh, especially for exam going, it would be easy before the exam that uh, system wise, all the videos are categorized. There are more than 250 videos. So you can please visit or you can visit my YouTube channel. So thank you one and all. I end with this beautiful quote. So no entertainment is so cheap as reading nor any pleasure so lasting. Thank you, friends.